So uh, my name is Leo, I work as a principal engineer at Red Hat, and I'll be talking about the, how we how we are implementing using the open uh, open outdoor etiquette to blueprint to as a as a reference to install it in our own uh, automotive operating system implementation. Uh, so this is basically the topic that the topics I'll be covering today. I'll, We'll talk a little bit about what AltSD is, what our region about a little bit about the SOFA blueprint itself, and then about the Altair ADK blueprint, and and if possible, if time allows it, allows it to demonstrate the the built image as a result of, as the result of the whole process. Um, so what's also AltSD? Uh, AltSD stands for Automotive String Distribution. Uh, sometimes it refers as a sub distribution of CentOS, um, where it's basically leverage as much uh, um, packages or whatever we can leverage from the, the upstream CentOS as good distribution as possible, but it has its own differences such as, such as its own uh, kernel package, packages, and it's also based on the uh, OS, OS3 read only um, system as well and uh, that later is considered the upstream of, of the Red Hat in vehicle operating system um, and there's this this upstream downstream relationships not new it's something that already happens today between um, some SIGs and CentOS and RHEL as well um, so um, a SOFI blu blueprint um, a software blueprint is a document that allows one to um, specify and and document um, how a particular uh, technology stack should run in a SOFI compliant system. Um, it kind of works. It kind of works as an interface on on what on what you should install or what you should install. What would be the resulting um, Output of that is, of that of that stack installed running in a system. Um, yeah. So few eyes. Um, a, a blueprint allows a, a blueprint is important in, in, in the group because it allows open discussions about a particular stack for this for the aut automo automotive industry. And, uh, <clears throat> and, it, it just allows uh, that the different vendors with different implementation with different implement, implementations to up, to um, to follow a, a standard path to accomplish the same result, which in this in, so for example in this case running a the outdoor stack in operating system you could be use the Sophie's reference implementation you all or it could be used out or you could use an, you could could use another whole different operating system you'd have the tools the methodology and the mechanism to 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 see how it, this can be implemented and then follow into the steps and then seeing the result and then um, verify the result that you have with what the blueprint documents or even whatever tool the blueprint provides to assert your um, uh, your blue, blue, blueprint implementation. Um, needless to say, as I was saying yesterday, anyone can submit a blueprint and it's hard encouraged to do. And to do so, it goes through a process of reviewing and discussion within several internal SOFI groups. Um, So um, the Altair blueprint itself. Um, so as you can see, blueprints are hosted in GitLab. Uh, eventually, they will all be hosted into the GitLab Sophie organization, uh, with the repository being um, uh, public and open, which means uh, everything is working the most open source way as possible. Uh, in this particular case, you can see the diagram. The blueprint itself, it doesn't matter that much um, about their, that yellow box about this, this, this SOFI reference implementation or SOFI compliant um, operating system. As long as it's compliant, you should be able to run the, the that's why the, the blueprint only cares about specifying how to run outdoor ADKit itself. And it just, the, it, 
requires a SOFI compliant system. Other than that, it shows um, it, it you didn't matter it much, which shows the the power um, of the of the Burplit high level abstraction in this case. And auto ready kit is basically all container based. So it, it's even more portable because all you need is a, is a container runtime that's able to support OCI and contain, Linux container images, and then you are covered. So that makes it even more portable um, than ever. Um, uh, so what we use to build, um, uh, to build our images, we use a tool called OSBuild, um, together with another tool that's called OSBuild MPP. So SBuild MPP basically takes a YAML file where you define your um, the, the build stages of your image, such as what packages you are installing, network configuration, which images you should pull, and things like that. And then it results into a, an image form, an output as an, an image output of your choice, such as QCOW or just a raw virtual machine image or email, AMI and, and so on. Uh, everything is hosted into our sample images repository, so all builds are reproducible. With those files, doesn't have to rerun the OSBuild comment, and you have a reproducible way to to create to create or recreate those images, either being a, a single engineer or or from the CI/CD system. Um, so let me stop sharing for a moment and share my. Uh, my terminal. So here um, I am on um, I am on my terminal screen, and you see the this is the sample image repository I was talking about. Um, so here I'm just going to show you what uh, the usual OS built um, OS built MPP image looks like. So if you go into images and particular case, we call this so fr 2 um, So here's basically, uh, I'm not going to go into, into greater deep detail on, on the format. Uh, I'm just going a quick walkthrough about it. So you can see uh, it, it does have the concept of, of, of global variables such as image size or image names. You can include um, OS building PP pipelines from other, from other files, and you can do several customizations, as I said, such as study packages or change the kernel kernel parameters on, on boot. And, and here, see, I, I'm pulling the auto air images locally. Uh, it means that images are pulled, are pulled during the image building phase, and they are statically loaded from from the um, from the local registry rather than pulling them live <clears throat> externally, and here's basically um, all the configurations and pulling external files such as Cyclone DDS and and others, and all the other stuff that is required by um, you know, by Altware and in the end, those are all enabled services that are using Podman and System D units unit unit files as which which will ensure that those uh, container are um, are running. Uh, system D will ensure the state that of those container applications are, are running. Um, uh, just a side note, um, we we are running our applications from Kubernetes-based files. So you can see here, for example, this is the ADKit API container service. Um, this is so Podman is basically using a Kubernetes Kubernetes YAML file as an application definition to run a containerized service within and the image. So uh, we are leveraging Kubernetes as some kind of an input or even as a uh, uh, kind of a standard to run containerized applications overall. Um, we still have... Um, Five minutes left, so I'm not going to to build an image myself because it takes quite a while. I'm just going to run um, to run the image, um, which I'll have to share 
my screen again. I hope it doesn't look too small. So I'm just going to use root and password as a, as a default password. If I run podman ps and filter it by wherever it is running, you see all the you see all the files that are running here, and and the same should be um, available for. As you can see, there's a, you can see the, the services are running here as well. Uh, so I could even, um, if I pass the, so let's go into the simulator container. Here, since they are still running on, on root, which is something that has root users, uh, which is not something that, That that's something that will change over time. I'm just going to install the Cyclone DDS um, Python utility, just to, uh, to verify uh, uh, all the Cyclone DDS processes that are running. So if I do Cyclone DDS, I believe PS. It should show me all the um, Cyclone DDS process that are running, which includes both alt uh, the authorized stuff and the Rust 2 stuff as well. Um, and that's everything that I had. Um, Thanks, Leo. Any questions, feel free to connect, contact me on Slack or the email address that's in, in the presentation. And if you have any questions for Leo, just put them in the Q&A box and Leo will watch that live as well. So um, so that was awesome. So we've just seen a demonstrate a live demonstration of Sophie containers, um, AutoSD, orchestration, and a blueprint, all, all, in, all within five minutes. Good job, Leo. So I uh, appreciate that.